If you're listening to this podcast, I think you'd also be interested in one of my favorites on the Ringer Podcast Network, and that would be Higher Learning. They dissect the biggest topics in Black culture, politics, and sports. And this week, they're talking about Colin Powell. They were talking about John Gruden last week. They really cover everything that is relevant in this moment. You can find Higher Learning on every Tuesday and Friday on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. You won't regret it. Check it out. This episode is brought to you by Visible. Maybe you've already let your New Year's resolution slip. We all have, but you can still make a two year's resolution with Visible. Right now, you can get a one line wireless plan from Visible for just $20 per month for 24 months. 24 months is basically four bachelor seasons. That could be four engagements, four broken engagements, so many other couples we didn't see them coming. It's really an eternity in Bachelor Nation. And that's unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon with no annual contracts. Switch now at Visible.com and use the code Visible24. Don't miss out. Offer ends January 31st. New members only. Promotional rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. This episode is brought to you by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. All right, it's official. I think I've discovered the ultimate coupling of all time. Like any good relationship, they really balance each other out. One is super sweet, and the other... Well, they can be a little nutty sometimes. It is, of course, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, the perfect combination of peanut butter and chocolate. So perfect, some would call it true love. Find Reese's now at a store near you. Michelle, let the journey begin. Let's go. Game time! Game time. Oh, Michelle, we're coming, Michelle, we're coming. Oh, Lordy, oh, oh my God. She's the damn good. What? Ooh. Oh my God! Michelle! I'm coming for you, baby! Oh my goodness! Deep breath, deep breath. Oh my gosh! Welcome to Bachelor Party. It's a new season of The Bachelorette. I'm Juliette Littman. I'm here with Callie Curry. Hi, Callie. Hi. We're going to be doing this all season long on Tuesdays this season, not Thursdays. Thursdays will be a rotating show. Maybe it'll pop up. Who knows? Michelle. It's Michelle season. She's here. What'd you think? Um, I am actually excited for this season. <laughs> actually. Do you feel like I, I really needed the week off in between Paradise and Michelle season? And it feels like very soon. But I'm also like, wow, Paradise feels like a long time ago. I don't know. I'm having like a real hard time keeping track of the chronology well, here in Bachelor Nation. Yeah, it does feel like it was a long time ago, but I feel like we had stuff shoved down our throats for like <laughs> six months straight that a week off felt like a lot. But also like I kind of like checked out of Bachelors in Paradise like four weeks ago. I know. I know. Um, the, the end was not good. So understandable. But last week I was like, oh, weird. Nothing on Monday. So and, much time. <laughs> yeah. And I was super excited for the episode tonight, which I didn't, I haven't felt in a while. So. Uh, and did it just like, what'd you think? Did it disappoint? Did it over deliver? Where, where are you at? Mm. I, listen, I'm excited for this season. I love Michelle, but like it was kind of a boring episode, but it's all, I feel like the first, like first episode for sure sometimes first two just aren't great because there's so many guys you can't really like yeah I feel like we talked about this before but I feel like the more you get to know the guys the better it is and like you get like 20 seconds of them yeah there's so little to like go off of and of course you spend a lot of time on the Ryans of the world and yeah. the Joes and that's his name right the guy she yeah. knows who, who ghosted her yeah Let's just talk Joe, about that for a second. Joe well, Copeland. Joe, I think it's Coleman. Is it Coleman. Joe Copeland? Actually, our colleague, my colleague, Amelia, she is also from Minnesota and her sister was in the same kindergarten class as Joe. Yeah, his name is Joe Coleman. And so she was showing us his his yearbook from uh, when he was in kindergarten. So that's exciting. He looks Any exactly thoughts? the same. Um, he just had more hair, but he looked exactly the same. And she said that her sister had a crush on him. So well, he's good pretty, looking, so for all this is kindergarten. So this is pretty exciting stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't remember having a crush on anyone in kindergarten. So her sister um, was advanced. I remember the first time I got like a Valentine. I think I was like in second or third grade. It was in the mail. And the boy told me not to tell anyone about it. So in the mail, like mailbox, like mm -hmm. at your house. Yeah. Like stamped? he stamped to me. Yeah. And he oh, told me wow. not to tell anyone. So harsh. Ouch. <laughs> but also like his parents had to have helped him. 
Yeah, I'm right? sure his parents knew. Sure. Yeah. He he told me not to tell anyone, so I can't tell you who it is. So anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, um, back to the bachelorette. Um, do you trust Joe since we're talking about him? I want to trust Joe. I think it'd be really fucked up to invoke the death of George Floyd and be disingenuous. Oh, and God, so I think about that. if he is not being truthful, I think that would be really messed up. But I don't know. I, I wonder how he ended up on the show. Like, was he already in the pool of people? Like, because how do the producers find the one guy in Minnesota who ghosted Michelle? And also why, who ghosts Michelle? I mean, he had his reasons, but. I guess also part of me is like ghosted is a harsh word. They didn't go on a date. Right. They were just not responding. Yeah. Yeah. Which is fine. To me, I was like, I don't even know if that would have been a conversation. Like I would have never brought it up. I would have had it in my mind, you know, like, oh, that did happen. But like, I wouldn't think this is a really serious thing that we need to talk about. Like, don't be yeah, just totally. Like, I don't answer DMs all the time. It's not like offensive. Or I didn't think it was. Maybe it sure. is. Maybe I'm an asshole. Sure. Or like sometimes things just peter out and like there's no explanation or like you didn't have to respond. So you don't. And then you move on. They didn't know each other. Right. So they like, never met. Yeah. I just feel like, I don't know if he felt the conversation was over. I need he more seemed, explanation on the ghosting. I just don't think he handled it very well. He seemed like really nervous. Nervous. And he, and he didn't really like explain himself particularly well. So maybe he was just, you know, first night jitters, but I, he didn't inspire a lot of confidence. Like I wouldn't be like, Oh wow. I'm related no. to him. No, so. I came across, like I came back from the conversation. Well, I wasn't in it, but watching it, <laughs> I, it's like, like you were there <laughs> Yeah, after the conversation. I was like, Oh, don't trust him. Seems like he's lying. But I do think afterwards when he walked back in the room with the guys, like his Mm -hmm. reaction seemed very like, oh, fuck. Like, I did not know that was going to be a a conversation. Like, I don't think it was like a planned thing. So then part of me is like, could he have thought about that at the like spur of the moment? Just come up with the bullshit? Like, probably not. That seemed like a really like extensive lie if he was just to make it up. Yeah. I think also just, you know, things, things got away from him. I was, I was thinking about the timing. It was last summer. So it was before she was even on that season. It was like in like in pandemic time, like it was a full year ago. So like a a year in the pandemic is like three years, non-pandemic. Yes. But also that does align with George Floyd. So it's not Mm -hmm. like the timing was, so I, I, I just can't imagine him being able to come up with that on the spot and it be a lie. Yeah. And it, it just would be so terrible. I really doubt it. So I hope he was genuine. He did seem nice. He didn't seem like a, like a dick or whatever. And he wasn't no. like showboating. So no. I don't know. He just was kind of like unimpressive, but he wasn't bad. Yeah. He is good looking. Yes, he is. I, I want, there's like so much to dig into. Can we just take a step back? Michelle, she looks so hot. She looks so, so good. good. Yeah. Like I, just beautiful. Stunning. Definitely had a glow up. Her arms are like chiseled. I don't even understand how anyone's arms look like that. Me neither. I aspire to arms like that, actually. Um, she looks... <laughs> I would aspire to it if it was like within the realm of possibility, and it's not, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not for me either, to be honest. I hate arm day. Um, <laughs> but she she looked so good. I will say that, like, recently, I feel like on opening night, the Bachelorettes have been, like, less impressive. Yeah. Like, well, it's just, like, their dress choices are, like, eh. I don't know. Just doesn't seem great. And tonight I was like, wow, she looks awesome. Katie wore that horrible red sparkly dress that like didn't really fit well. And I don't remember Claire's. Tasha did look really good in like a green dress, but that didn't have the same effect because she came in like halfway through or whatever. But also like came into like a lobby. Like it was just like, oh, Tasha. Yeah. She didn't get the same entrance. Michelle also her dress was like, such a statement piece. It was like making noise against the ground. Like every time she moved, which I, I liked, I was like, you could like hear Michelle's presence her, her coming. coming. I, yeah. yeah. I thought it was a good touch. Also the stairwell. They, I feel like she had to have walked up and down it a hundred times, but her walking down the stairwell, I was like, this is a great shot. Yeah. It looked, it like draped really nicely for TV. I think it's, was it sequins? Was it, that was it like metal? I don't know. It, it looked beautiful. Bedazzled. Something, something like that. <laughs> It was beautiful. We'll find out who it reflected made it. light. I know that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and we'll find out who made it because Carrie Fetman, the stylist, he always posts like who everyone's wearing um, 
after post the episodes. episodes. Yeah. So awesome. check them out. Check them out on Instagram and we'll find out. I had a question about that dress. Like, what kind of undergarments is she wearing? Like, can you wear underwear with that dress? Can you wear a bra with that dress? Like, or is it like a lot of tape? I mean, I have, I don't know how that, that dress wouldn't work for me. I definitely have to wear a bra at all times or like have something like sewn in. But I was just like, I was trying to understand how that was working. There, I, I, my guess is like a lot of double-sided tape and like maybe they, like they sewed cups into the dress for her or something. But yeah, I was she, just like confused. There's no way she was comfortable. Um, <laughs> and she was wearing that dress for a long time. Long time. Yeah. Uh, it seemed heavy. Yeah, it did. Because like it kept the back of it, like I feel like it kept like drooping one way or the other. I don't know. Yeah, you the, could like almost see her butt crack a few times. Yeah. So definitely no underwear. Definitely no bra. I don't think. She got to sew stuff in, I guess. I hope she was How do you go cold. to the bathroom in that dress? Can you imagine being hot and just sweating and the tape slipping and having to get it redone? Oh my God. Well, she's in Palm Springs in July, so definitely really hot. At least it's Also, a dry like, heat. even if it's cold, doing a show like this, you're going to be fucking sweating. Like, you're I nervous. Know. There's just no way. Nerves, the lights. I actually, I was just doing some close ups of as we were chatting at looking at her dress. It looks like it was actually kind of gold, but I think because of the lights, it always looked silver. Silver. It definitely looked silver. On TV. I, I can't really tell. We'll have to we'll have to see as it carries on. But she just looked amazing. And, you know, she clearly worked out, which is like, you know, you should. This, you're going to be on TV for this. So I, great job, um, Michelle. Question. What co- what university college does she go to? She went to Bradley University in Peoria, Illinois, which apparently is D1. I had no idea. The basketball stuff was so heavy handed. She graduated yeah. in 2015, by the way. So I just was like, this is way too much basketball. We get it. She played hoops, but like that doesn't define who she is. I don't even no. think, I mean, that's great that she played basketball, but <laughs> I, I, I actually like wonder why it was so heavy. Like if I were the bachelorette, I don't think they'd have me like spiking a ball, volleyball every two seconds. <laughs> you know what I, I mean? I don't think so either. I think maybe because it's like a sport more associated with men. And it's like, she's so badass. She played basketball. Ah, uh, maybe. Okay. That's one of my guesses. I yeah, it was just a lot of it. They kind of played up basketball with Rachel too. Like they like did a basketball date with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Did I don't she even know. play basketball? Wasn't she a track and field? Yeah, I believe so. I think she just was like into sports. Okay. So I don't know, but she did get Kareem Abdul-Jabbar to come on the show. It's pretty. Yeah, awesome. I mean that's cool. <laughs> Maybe he can come on Bachelor Party. <laughs> I wonder if watches. He, is, is he a fan? Yes, that's why one of the reasons why he was on the show with Rachel is he is a fan. Gosh, it's so like that to me is so intriguing to know who like sits down and watches <laughs> The Bachelor or Bachelorette. It's a lot of sports people. I think because it's competition yeah. based, even yeah. though it's not supposed to be, it is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's like a, a, a ton of football crossover and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. One of the Zellers is really into it, I believe. I, I've been pitched him to come on the podcast. I, think I mean, it's Seth Cody. watches with me. Yeah, it's like a very popular show. So. I think it's also, it's an easy watch. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, you don't have to pay a ton of attention unless you're doing a podcast about it, at which point you have to take notes. But otherwise it's like, you know, <laughs> pretty, pretty easy. Just kick back, whatever. What did you think about them having Michelle's alleged students on the show? Uh, it was fine. Like. I never I, care I, for that. I'm just like, let's leave the kids out of it. Yeah. I mean, all of them have to sign waivers yeah. right oh yeah their parents they're, yeah. Un- they're under 18 yeah uh i well i wouldn't be signing the waiver that's for sure me neither my children were, would not be going on the bachelor or the bachelorette to talk about their their teacher i did think it was cool seeing her like teach fractions or whatever but i was like is she even a math teacher i think she's just like did, did we never really found out like, i don't know what type of teacher she is. she is yeah but also it's like we know she's a teacher yeah we get it <laughs> We, we didn't really need all that, but whatever. No, it seems like they're really hitting hard on like a couple of points. Yeah, Basketball, which, teacher, into her family. Had a perfect yeah. childhood. Yeah. I, I like seeing her parents. She's, they seem like sweet people and she like really cares about them. Yeah. Yeah, and, they do. Also like being married that long. It's, I don't know very many people that are still married, still happy after yeah. that long. So, yeah. It's an accomplishment. Yeah. It is. It also seems really important to her. So 
that was like interesting in the conversation with Nate, which we'll come back to when he was talking about his mom's divorce and, and everything. Yeah. Um, but Michelle just seems great. I, I, I like found this episode a little dull, but like, I really like her. So that kept me interested. So it was fine. I like her. And there are a few guys that I like. Sure. Um, we'll get into them, but just, she did say like two things that I was just like, no, Michelle, that's not it. One of them was that she said she wears her heart on her shoulder. (laughs) (laughs) That's not it, but that's okay. And the other was when she was talking to Ryan, she was like, I'm going to listen to my red flags. And then she proceeded (laughs) to get rid of him. That's the last time I checked red flags don't speak, but perhaps I'm wrong. (laughs) first night jitters it's okay michelle we still love you yeah you could tell that she was like a little nervous she was like over i don't know it's not even talking like every time someone stepped out of the limo i felt like she felt like she had to do something or say something like ow ow and i was just like you can't do that to everyone everyone doesn't like make that make you make that noise in fact the guy she did it to i was like i mean who did she do it to I don't remember his name. That's how like not ow ow he was. So hard to keep track of these guys. There was no one who I was like, wow, they're really hot. Was there anyone that did it for me? Don't think so. I liked some of the personality more than the sure. looks. Yeah, but um, no, one, no one was like, holy crap, they're hot. Although in general, I would say I need personality to be really attracted to someone. Oh, personality outweighs looks any day of the week for me. Yeah. Like it's not close. Also yeah. like... In general, I found like I find guys that are super hot are usually like corny and lack personality because they don't need it. <laughs> it's true. It's true. They don't have to try that hard because they're just really good looking. Like Thomas, so attractive. Do I think his personality is amazing? Not really. It's not bad, no, but he's, amazing. He is really no. corny. Also, in case yeah. you're wondering, it took you about 15 minutes to reference Thomas. So <laughs> there we go. Are you following Thomas and Becca, by the way? They're like really out here at their relationship. I'm not following them. Uh, Because I feel weird about following people on Instagram for some reason. I just mean like in general, like reading about them. Yeah, on TikTok. They're all over TikTok. Yeah, they're like moving in together. They're like hot and heavy very quickly. I hope it works out. They seem serious, but they also seem like, I mean, minus his breakdown on on Paradise. Like they seem like generally like level-headed people. I think he seems like a real girlfriend guy. Like he just seems like a serial dater in my opinion. Well, hopefully he's just like, he's like, I, I really want to like just settle down and start a family. Yeah. And I think also like some serial daters, like therefore find marriage more quickly because they're just sort of like open to it or whatever. So that's fine. But yeah. that's kind of the, he's a real girlfriend guy. A, a yeah, wife I can guy. See that. What's I that can see from? That. Wife guy. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> back to the show. We'll get into the guys, but I just want to say, I feel like this is a controversial opinion and it really shouldn't be. I think this, everyone's murmuring about it. I think the show's aware. Caitlin and Tasha, not good hosts, not excited to have them back. I, nothing about them as individuals. That's for another time. But like, I just do not enjoy them as hosts. Like Tasha is so scripted. I just feel like Caitlin is hard to watch and I was not thrilled to have them back. And like when they went into the guys rooms, I just was like, this is like such a waste of time. Multiple things here. One, <laughs> Caitlin in general, I like her personality. Like yes. overall, I like her personality. Do I think she's a good host in this role? No, she might even be better by herself. I think I on her like podcast, her, she's pretty good. So I think she is yeah, better by herself. Yeah, like the interactions with Tasha, I'm just like, do you guys even like each other? It just seems like so like forced. The whole thing seems forced. This is definitely not what Tasha's supposed to do in life. That's for sure. Definitely um, not. I really don't like them as hosts. Maybe individually I'd feel differently, but together they're not great. Uh, they weren't great last time. So I'm just like, they didn't bother me. It was kind of just like whatever last time, but definitely not good. Not David Spade vibes. Like, I don't know how he wasn't asked to do this. <laughs> um, but they also showed them a lot in the first episode. Like, yeah. I don't need your reaction to the guys. You guys are both like engaged. Why? Who cares what you think? Also, I guess like they're experts because they're engaged, but what do they know? I don't know. I I feel like like, I would trust Michelle over the two of them already. Like, I just don't trust their judgment. But I also feel like the show's kind of setting them up for failure. Like, we didn't see Chris Hansen's... Chris Harrison? Harrison? Yeah. Who's Chris Hansen? I believe he's from To Catch a Predator. (laughs) (laughs) 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris, Chris Harrison, uh, like they didn't Sorry. like flash. He, he, he? Yes, he's also been on Dateline. <laughs> By the way, she used to love that show. Uh, it was really popular. <laughs> Uh, very I could problematic. Ha- I'm glad they got oh rid my of god, it. absolutely. I could see it having like a Netflix revival, similar to like Unsolved Mysteries, though. Anyway, uh, carry on. So not Chris Hansen. Chris Harrison. They didn't like flash to him when like girls were coming in. Like, oh, she's hot. Like that just yeah. didn't happen. So like, why are we doing it? The show's also, setting them up for failure. It's just like making them seem like her like giggle squad and just sort of like a really boring cliche of like what like girlfriends I'm doing air quotes right now are supposed to be. And like, it would just be a lot more realistic if they were like, it did like a, um, F boy Island kind of thing where they're like, they're like, okay, who'd you like? And then someone whips out a phone and they go through his Instagram. Like that's, what's that's missing. more realistic. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I was just like uh, thinking about the opposite too. Like if it were the bachelor and they had a random guy doing it, they wouldn't do that. They wouldn't no. flash the guy and the guy be like, oh, she's hot, huh? Like, they wouldn't do it. So I'm just like, I don't like how they're, at, I don't know. The whole Real thing. Housewives of Salt Lake attended that last week when they had the husbands hang out together and they, they ended up talking about <laughs> sex. Yeah. And it was so, so staged and so cringeworthy. And I was just like, so everyone awkward. here has to just hate hate this. So and if yeah, they don't, Also, like, talking about them. sex with your wife is, like, just weird. You know, yeah. it's different if it's just, like, a girl you're having sex with. But with your wife, it's, like, a lot. Yeah, it, the whole thing was just that. I just felt like that would never happen, and it it was weird. And you're totally right; it's a real double standard. If they had like, if they had like Jason Tardick and Zach Clark being like, "Wow, he's so hot," or "Wow, she's a smoke show," you everyone would be offended. By the way, let's retire that smoke show. Never need to hear it again. <laughs> Did Ever. you feel that way already, or is it just because of the Bachelorette? Uh, I who says that I've like I've heard it like because you know you know what it is but like sure. people don't say that in real life or at least not to me maybe um, I'm not one I feel maybe like I've heard it <laughs> <laughs> no one's ever called me a smoke show to my face that I'm aware of either <laughs> but I would say I have heard people use it but like not in several years it's it's out of date I yeah maybe I feel like maybe like 10 years older than me people said it sure 10 years ago, 10 years older than you and 10 years ago. Yeah. So. Like, yeah. No one was saying that ten, when I was 21. Sure. Me either. Anyway. Yeah. So I just, I, especially since like, it's been like a thing the last two seasons when he said it, I was like, you clearly didn't watch the shows. I know. Um, the other thing, them going through their stuff. I was like, that's like violation of privacy here. It reminded me of Room Raiders on MTV. Remember that? <laughs> yes. With the black light. Yes, yes, yes. Also a great show. Yeah. <laughs> MTV had some real hits back in the day. But like, it's just uh, obviously, it w- or I hope, obviously it wasn't like a real privacy evasion. Like I'm sure they, it was like semi-stage, but just like a really weird thing to be like, yeah, we get to go through your stuff. Like, yeah. no, you don't. Also, what do they think they're going to find? I mean, aside from Ryan's notes, which we'll come back to, like, what could you possibly find that would be like noteworthy? Like, I can't think Uh, of anything that uh, aside from like a weapon, but I assume they scream for that (laughs) and you can't get on the plane. Uh, A weapon, maybe like pills, Um, drugs. Sure. Yeah. Dirty underwear, like really dirty, like really dirty. Okay. That would be gross. Sure. But like, I don't know. That would just be so weird. Also, like, how long have they been there for? Like, if they just got there like two days ago, I hope their room isn't like a complete disaster. You're like, you're not really getting to know someone based off how they live in their hotel room for two days. Right. They probably had to quarantine for a few days, even though everyone could have been vaccinated by that point because it was like late July. But I assume they still have people quarantine. So probably like five plus days. I'm not really sure. Yeah. I don't know. Also, in case you're wondering, they were at... um, this resort in Indian Wells, which is, you know, where they have the Indian Wells tennis Thanks. tournament. And it's also in Palm Springs, but not the La Quinta, but they didn't really like play up where they were, where I feel like for both Matt season and, and Caitlin, um, Caitlin I mean, or Caitlin. Tasha, Tasha, they yeah. like constantly were just, like showing the Wait, signage. No, and Katie. No. What's her name? Claire. Claire. Yeah. Claire, Tasha, Katie, yeah. and Matt. Like we were like, we're very aware of where they were. Yeah, and this they tried to like make it seem more generic. I thought it looked really nice though. It looked more like Nemecolon where Matt was than where Katie, Tasha, and Caitlin were. I mean, yeah, that, that was awful. 
They I've never been to like, the La Quinta. I feel like they got the memo, like, we need to step it up a little bit. I think that the staff also hated being in New Mexico. So that's one of the reasons why they went back to uh, Palm, Palm Springs. Springs. Yeah, which yeah. I personally hate, but I do think it's probably a good place to shoot. I just think it's really boring there. There's nothing to do. Not a pool person, as you know. So there's nothing for me there. Yeah. I, I like Palm Springs. Nothing it's against like Palm Springs. Pool and golf and I guess shopping, but whatever. Tennis. Yeah, tennis is good. I like tennis. This episode is brought to you by eBay Authenticity Guarantee. eBay knows that when it comes to jewelry, authenticity is the real gem. When you see the blue check mark that says Authenticity Guarantee, it means your next piece will be carefully inspired by jewelry experts and will always be worth its weight in gold. Whether you're looking to make a statement or build the perfect everyday look, eBay is making sure you get the real deal. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that jaw-dropping piece will always arrive jaw-droppingly real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. This episode is brought to you by Visible. Maybe you've already let your New Year's resolution slip. We all have, but you can still make a two years resolution with Visible. Right now, you can get a one-line wireless plan from Visible for just $20 per month for 24 months. 24 months is basically four bachelor seasons. That could be four engagements, four broken engagements. So many other couples we didn't see them coming. It's really an eternity in Bachelor Nation. And that's unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon with no annual contracts. Switch now at Visible.com and use the code Visible24. Don't miss out. Offer ends January 31st. New members only. Promotional rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. This episode is brought to you by State Farm. You might say all kinds of stuff when things go wrong, but these are the words you really need to remember. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. They've got options to fit your unique insurance needs, meaning you can talk to your agent to choose the coverage you need, have coverage options to protect the things you value most, file a claim right on the State Farm mobile app, and even reach a real person when you need to talk to someone. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. All right, I guess we can talk about the guys now. Let's go. Who is your favorite? Let's oh my start goodness. With that. It's just like I'm either getting old or cynical, which I've always been, but even worse. Aren't these guys our <laughs> age? <laughs> They're a little bit younger. <laughs> but I not, feel like, like I, not that much younger. I think just like as a human, I'm just like getting I don't know. Well, I don't know. Who's my favorite? I don't as really a, have as a one. human, as a human, as opposed to other humans that don't get older. <laughs> <laughs> I just mean it's not relative to their ages. Just like I, I'm just living life. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm trying to think who's my favorite. You know, despite all odds, against all odds, I kind of liked Chris G, who I mercilessly attacked for wearing the hoodie underneath his blazer. But then I kind of liked him, even though he, I, the, and, but then I was back out. I was like a motivational speaker. I just can't. He started talking to her like he was one. Um, By the way, I have nothing against the hoodie and blazer. I won't ever criticize it again. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> apparently, I own one, and so does my husband. So all good. No, no criticism here. <laughs> um, I guess I liked Leroy, and I liked Illumide. I think that's kind of it. I can I tell you who I did not like. Yeah, I'm wondering really, if we're gonna have an overlap on do not like. I did not like Jamie. I found him really annoying. First of all, he says he's 32. I feel like he's lying about his age. Um, he looked older, much older than that to me. And also, he just was like, "It's our show. They're just here." I just found him really over the top and like fake. And I he was over the top for sure. And I I didn't care for it. Who's your favorite? <sighs> okay, so <laughs> wow. I, I liked both firefighters. Okay. I, which I don't know their names off the top of my head. One was PJ. Okay. And then what's his name? Oh, okay. So I liked Rick. Oh yeah. I liked Rick too. And then they like kept giving him interviews and I was like, stop fucking stop. I liked him. And then like with each interview, I was like, oh, but so, like out, outside the interview, when he was actually with her, I liked him a lot. Rick was the guy on the plate. <laughs> <laughs> yes. For those of you who are wondering, I was really surprised when she was like, good chemistry with Rick. I was like, really? With the guy on the plate, you had good chemistry? Because I just feel like it would be hard to get past that. But maybe on I the other hand, it. it was a real icebreaker. So she was able to be like, yeah, cool. I like this guy. Yeah, I got past it. Then Ryan, 
I was like, oh, not going to like him at all. Then on the date, I was like, oh, I like him. Then I was like, don't like him. I knew I didn't like him. <laughs> like, I feel like I was on a roller coaster with Ryan. Yeah. Um, but my gut was correct. So let's just talk about Ryan for a second. He's the guy who brought the notes and Caitlin and Tasha found them. First of all, it wasn't like note, like a few note cards of notes. It, it was, was like pages a and pages. Binder. Yeah. yeah. Which like, did he actually read that? I can't imagine reading all of it. Like unless, maybe you're really bored and you're not allowed to watch TV and you're just like in quarantine. So you end up reading the notes, but it was like very, very long. It was multiple pages. Michelle needed time alone to digest all of it. So I saw like, it was like sprawled out all over the bed. Yeah. They, he had like headshots of all the guys. They probably gave that to him when they arrived. Is my guess because uh, I, was I've been a to night lot one of information. I've been to night one before, although I guess the pictures were on Facebook. But I've been to night one before, and they hand out like a like a like a headshot sheet, like everyone's faces on one page. So they might have given that to the guys too. So I don't know. It's a lot. He misspelled bachelorette on the folder. I don't know if you caught that. <laughs> I didn't catch that at all. I was trying to read because he had two folders. Yeah. And one I couldn't read what rose, the other one said. And he like left out an E. So that's a, a demerit for, for Ryan. Yeah. Do you think that they should have told her right away? Or like, obviously I understand why they did not tell her right away for the purpose of TV. But like, it's kind of weird to like make him the ice cream guy and like go through all of the effort of like getting him the ice cream chuck. It's, yeah. not like, it's not like he chose that completely on his own. He didn't like bring in his own ice cream truck. So it's sort of like they they decided consciously to make Ryan like the, pl- like yeah. the plot point of episode one. Yeah. They wanted to create drama. Yeah. But they didn't. They didn't wait that long. I, no, no, they didn't wait that long. But also uh, if we're assuming that she gets to make her own choices, right? Like mm-hmm. they didn't know if she could get over it or not. I think she does get to make her own choices. I think there's certain times they like, you know, like you can keep this person if you do this or whatever. But, or you can get, you know, you, whatever. But I think she does ultimately get to choose. Like, I don't think they force anyone on her. Yeah. So I, you know, she, they, she could have, she could have chosen to keep him. So I don't think they knew she was going to eliminate him, but I'm glad she did. The notes were cringe. Just were like really a lot. Also, it was like, be also, like Jason Tardick. The notes about himself. I'm like, did you write those? <laughs> it's a good point. They were like really harsh notes about, I, your, about, about himself. I did believe that was from his sister-in-law at that point where I was like, she's really trying to help you. Here's what she really thinks about you. She, I mean, he said she, he admitted that she wrote some and he wrote some, which also mm-hmm. I'm like, which ones did you write? Like yeah. it was a lot. And then he was like, I've only seen two hours of the show before, but then he made it seem like he'd seen a lot more. Like when he's just like kicking it at home, he's working on his notes and has the bachelor on in the background. Yeah. And then he was also like, saying like, yeah, when I would watch the episodes, I would write down, oh, she likes ice cream. Oh, she likes this. And I'm like, so you, you, you watched did episodes? Watch the show. Yeah. yeah. So that's more than two hours of the show total. He seems so to there know. was a lot of inconsistencies. Even though I like Michelle a lot and I, I thought she seemed like we didn't get the full picture for Matt season, I don't know a lot about her. And I was like, how does he even know she likes ice cream? I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know that either. And we didn't get a lot from her from Matt season. So I'm like, you couldn't have gotten this much information from watching just that. You were Did you stalk her? Digging. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> um, also, like, it was weird. They mentioned Ben Higgins. Like, I was like, what is happening in these notes? Also, his sister-in-law... Those are extensive fucking notes. I know. Does she have a job? If not, maybe she we should... have her on the show. <laughs> I know. How do we get Ryan's she knows sister-in-law? <laughs> yeah. It's a great point. We need her to come on. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that was a lot. I, would you have been able to keep him? I think I for sure would have been like, bye. I think I would have been like, bye too. If you, if you got a whole plethora of men. Wow. Also, he was so yeah. nervous. He didn't handle it well. That's no. the other thing is like, there's plenty of ways to, handle a lot of this stuff and he just, also when she was he started going panicking through, yeah when she was going through his notes like his hand movements like he it seemed like he was like trying to take stuff so that she wouldn't see stuff no he gotta I, go i believe also when she first confronted him on the topic of hands he like grabbed her hand uh, and, and she was, was trying so to pull away and it was so awkward so cringe <laughs> i will say that through his notes like he was trying to get screen time achieved yeah we know who you are Good work, Ryan. We'll never forget you. Out night one, we'll yeah. never forget you. The ice cream yeah. truck, man. Uh, <laughs> so he, he did it. Good for yeah. him, I guess. He accomplished his goal. Let's talk about uh, Nate. Did you like oh, Nate? Loved Nate. Nate got the first impression rose. I like Nate too. He seems like objectively the best guy. Also, I thought he pulled off his earrings well. And I'm not really an earrings person, but 
And it reminded me, ring, right? Yeah. It reminded yeah. me of JD from Survivor with the earrings. Oh. I don't R-R-D. know if JD pulled him off, but yes. I thought he did, but in his like own goofy way. Gosh, since, you know, I have not spoken about Survivor at all. I just want to say, JD, I will miss you so much. Me too. That's so all, all I needed to say about that. Money. Um, <laughs> we'll find some time to talk about JD soon. <laughs> anyway, I thought Nate pulled it off well. He seems really genuine and sweet. Oh, I thought he was so cute. Like, yeah, he just, nothing seemed rehearsed. Like, he seemed excited to be there. Seemed genuinely nervous, which I thought was like, it was endearing to me. Like I could tell he was like struggling, but in a good way. Like even him being like, sorry, I'm going on a tangent. Like I was just like, keep talking. You're doing good. I really liked Nate. Also, he's six foot eight. I didn't. Yeah, he seemed I didn't, huge. I didn't get that actually. I didn't get the six foot eight vibes, but I'm into it. What? He seemed so... I, in my like notes from watching the show, I wrote, where the fuck were the title cards? There were so many times where I was like, oh, what's this guy's name? And like, it wouldn't flash up. And then it flash up for a second after I was done trying to figure out his name. And then it would go back to him and I'd be like, what is his name? I feel like usually they shove the title cards down your throat, especially it's never night enough. one. Never yeah. enough. And, and I, I feel like they were lacking significantly this episode. I completely agree. Like for so, episode one and two, there should just be a title card. Every time. Uh, yeah. Every time. Just assume we don't know who anyone is because we don't. So Title card. And there's like 50 fucking guys. Like, how am I supposed to, I wrote down his name is Nick <laughs> in my notes. I didn't know it was Nate until we started shoot, filming this. Also, um, I was, I, when we did the bios, I like bagged on him for having a Y in his name, but it turns out that Nate is a nickname for a much longer name. So I, I retract, you know, like, Oh, I, I didn't just, know like, that. I totally well. He when he introduced himself, he said her, his full name, and then he's like, "But I go by Nate or whatever." So uh, I have so many adjectives for people because I couldn't figure out what their names were. Like so what? for for Nate, I have tall, light skin, long neck, like him. <laughs> <laughs> the neck really gets you. I feel like you really can tell. You are really keyed into people's heights based on their their neck. Neck, yeah. I have a pretty long neck. So whenever I wear like a turtleneck or something, like I'm always like, there's never a long enough turtleneck for my neck. Do you wear a lot of turtlenecks? No, I don't. But that's part of the reason why I don't. I recently did um, like a photo shoot in a semi turtleneck and it just like brought back all of these feelings (laughs) about turtlenecks. So yes, he does have a long neck though. Does he not? Yeah, he does. He does. Yeah. And he seemed like a really sweet guy. I thought it was interesting that he was like, I don't want to lead with family because my, I don't have a happy story. And I thought that was like sad. I, I sad. Thought it was sad. Yeah. I felt, I felt for him, but it was nice that she like, you know, wanted him to open up and she seems really thoughtful. Also, one thing I like about her is she l- seems to be attracted to people who have not necessarily had like a super easy life. Like she's interested in challenges. And I think that speaks really well of her. Yeah. I also thought like him saying it and I, it wasn't one of those things where like, I'm saying it just so you asked me about it. I felt like he really didn't want to. And then she was like, well, I want you to. And he was like, fuck, like I just told you, I don't want to fucking go into it. And you could tell he was like getting semi-emotional by just saying like that one little thing about his family. Like yeah. I truly don't think he wanted to go into it. Yeah, I agree. But like wanted to acknowledge it. I guess it was like weighing on him and everything. So I don't know. It was, it was very sweet right before he like, was revealed to be a, a bachelor contestant. Apparently his, uh, his Instagram bio said that he bought half his followers. <laughs> so he was like when he was 17. So he's like honest about it, I guess. Oh, I like that. I do too. Um, I thought that was funny. I will say that in like the previews for the show, there's some like weird shit around him. And I'm like, I, I like for the whole season, like the previews for the whole season, the little thing at the end. Yeah. So I'm like, interested to see like what happens with him. Like if he's genuine or not. I seem like they kept talking about like, did, did she know him before the show? And I couldn't figure out who they were talking about. And I thought it was him, but maybe it was Joe. I don't know. I think they purposely made that ambiguous. Um, yeah. So it could be Joe, but it might be someone else. I bet it's someone else because it's like a red herring. You're supposed to like assume. I don't know. I'm just like looking at his, his Instagram while we speak. And he's, he reads a lot, which I find very appealing. He shows himself with a lot of different books. Um, they also said he was an actor or something. I think he said, yeah, they, they called him an actor, but like, yeah. he lives in Austin. How much acting can he be doing? 
It's not like not a, much. a hub for, for acting. No, I don't know. Not, actually, what is his job? A sales executive. Who knows what that means? I mean, could, could be anything. <sighs> Really, there's, yeah, there's a few questionable anything. titles. Speaking of questionable titles, one of my least favorites was the Pizza Panure. Oh yeah, I hate that. I mean, it's just like so stupid. He was just like a lot in episode one, but I don't know if he was like overcompensating, trying to get attention for the first episode. But it was a lot to handle. It was a lot to take in. He was the one with the cannolis, right? Yeah. They had so many cannolis. Like, I don't know why they had so many. There was like 30. Also, <laughs> I don't think it's that weird. She's never had one. I've had cannolis, but they're not that common. I think it's kind of weird. She hasn't ever like had a bite of one. They're delicious. Also not for me, Okay, but they're fine. Um, but he also said that he made them and I'm like, no, you didn't. And then she asked what's in them. And he said, deliciousness. And I was like, do you even know? It didn't seem like he knew the answer. <laughs> he doesn't. Cause he did actually make them. Yeah. So, and- <laughs> Let's talk about Clayton for a second. And I think we just need to establish that it's an, it's yeah. it's out there. We all know it. I mean, just like, you know, dramatic pause, skip ahead if you don't want to hear what could be a spoiler. But Clayton is the next Bachelor. So yeah. Clayton does not win. Clayton is currently filming his season. They started out in the mansion. It's like back to normal. Jesse Palmer's the new host, etc. How did you feel about watching Clayton knowing he's the Bachelor? I thought they were going to show way more of him than they did. Mm-hmm. Like they'd flash to him a little bit, but it, we didn't get like a ton of Clayton content. I'm sure that's to come because they have to like set it up. Yeah. Uh, but overall good. Was it his mom on it? Right. Yeah. She's a um, special education teacher. Oh yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. He's from Missouri. He says he likes a slower pace of life. I kind Went of liked Mizzou. it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just sort of was Which like. Which is in the SEC, by the way. I, why did I think it was in the big 12? It wasn't something else besides the SEC. Cause it got added like my senior yeah. year. I want to say. Yeah. I think it, I think it was the big 12, but whatever. doesn't matter. Anyway. Yes. It's in the SEC now. <laughs> it, it means more. I, I have nothing negative to say. He's cute. He seems fine, but like, yeah, I, I'm fine with him. He's big. He's big. He's like a yeah. bulky dude. You could tell he played football. Yeah, for sure. He, he, Thick neck. He reminds me of like a JJ Watt type of like human. Yeah. Which I guess is a compliment. I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. he's clearly a football player. I will just say like, I kind of like knowing which of these guys is the next bachelor because I, I don't need to like be worrying about guessing. I'm just like, okay, cool. Let's get to know him and we'll see him for bachelor. Like that's cool by me. I have no problem with it. I'm not mad at it. Me neither. I, I was like, this is fine. And I don't feel like I really like need to get to know them. Um, yeah. Or and like not get to know them. I'm happy to get to know them. I'm just like not going to be invested in him as him and Michelle's relationship. Right. So it's like, I, okay, there's 30 other guys. Clayton does seem sweet. I wonder how far he'll go. Like, does he make final four? Does he make top six? I, I think he's oh, got to make at least top six. I really hope he doesn't make final four. That's a little too far for me to know. I know. It'd be like kind it. of a, a waste of time. Yeah. I feel like eight is a good, good place for him. Yeah. All right. Well, Clayton, we'll see you in the future and for all of the winter because... This is the beginning of six months of, of Bachelor content. Bachelorette straight into Bachelor. So I hope everyone's ready. Buckle up. Um, oh, yes. One more random note. Sure. I have written down, clearly don't know shit about apples. Oh my God. When, he, <laughs> when she started naming the apples, I was like, never heard of any of these apples other than Honeycrisp and Granny Smith. And I didn't even put two and two together that Granny Smith was green. I thought that was funny. That was Rodney, right? He's the apple That's man. the other... Isn't he the other firefighter? Um, yeah. No, he's not. No, I don't think so. Oh, okay, so... No, Rodney I'm is the confused. sales rep from Rancho Cucamonga. Yeah. Um, Rodney is so much cuter on the show than he looks in his photo. I It's like astonishing yeah. to me. It's like very I strange. I, I barely recognized it from his photo. Agree. Uh, I think that's why I thought he was the other firefighter because I'm looking at his photo and I was like, that's not him. <laughs> we'll figure it out by the end of this podcast. I promise. Um, I will say I overlapped with you hmm. on one guy and okay. that was um, Leroy Holiday. Really yes. liked him. Right. <laughs> the third, the fourth <laughs> Holiday brother. <laughs> yeah, I was into him. 
<laughs> yeah, he didn't get a ton of screen time, but I was really glad when she picked him. He really looks so much like a holiday. It's crazy. <laughs> it's like live too. I was like, this guy has to be related somehow. <laughs> I know. Like, can we do like a 23 and me and see where they share family or something? It's so yeah, crazy. Yeah, also he was really cute. Like he looked great. Yeah. It was good debut for him. I liked him too. He's he seems sweet. He's a biomedical PhD student. I mean, that's pretty dope. I like I'm yeah. into it. Um, I had high hopes for Romeo, the 32 year old mathematician from New York City, and he disappointed. He was super cheesy. Yeah, he wasn't good. <laughs> that was too bad. And I felt like he was like a little too into himself. I don't see him going far. I don't. He just like gave me like weird vibes. Mm-hmm. The one person I started following preseason was Pardeep. Pardeep. Yes. Who got like no time, but I just liked the fact that he like lived in Brooklyn and also was like a scientist as well. And um, I, I thought he seemed okay, but I found it annoying when he was like, when she was like, well, Pardeep will you accept this rose? And his answer was yes, now and always. It's just like, calm down. You just that. Maybe it's not always. <laughs> <laughs> when do we need to jump ahead so far? <laughs> yeah, that was a lot. So, you know, since we're talking about the roses, yes. I feel like the people that got eliminated, I was like, don't know you, never knew you. <laughs> like, I, I have no, this is what I wrote down. That I was like, I remember him. <laughs> this is what I wrote down. No sleeves, long hair, high hair. I was like, those are the three guys who got voted off. I have no idea who they are. <laughs> Speaking of hair... Yes. It seemed like a lot of the white guys had the same style of hair. It's, maybe it's why it was hard to tell them apart. I think the one with the <laughs> long hair, long hair was Edward, the wellness coach from LA. High hair was Garrett, the tech CEO from Salt Lake. We'll see him on Bravo. And no sleeves, I believe, was Joe Mari, the personal trainer from Fresno. Um, uh, but, I, but was it really only four guys who got sent home? Probably was more, we just didn't see it on TV. Because we didn't know who they were. Yeah, because they were never on the show. So it's just like, okay. I was out. so confused. I was like, who are these people that just went home? That's when they really need to have the nameplates on screen is when they're getting sent <laughs> home so we can keep track. Yeah, but <laughs> like even looking at this like grid of people, there's a few that I was like, I'm like. Mm. Yeah, like Brian and Brandon. I don't think we saw Brandon. If we did, I can't remember him. And Brian, I like was on for like okay. three seconds. What did you say? Brandon K. Yeah. Do you see how their hairstyles are the same though? Yeah, totally. And then Chris G and Brian, if I wasn't watching really closely, I might think was the same person. And then Casey looks like <laughs> Dak Shepard to me in like a weird way in this photo. Casey was on the show. I, I wasn't into him. Um, Wait, Casey looks like Dak Shepard? Oh, yeah. Dak Shepard. He does. Not, not Dak Prescott. That's what I was thinking of. <laughs> I was like, uh, <laughs> don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. you know he's clearly an asshole but I kind of liked oh the other firefighter is Daniel I found him <laughs> oh yep 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 I liked um, him too I kind of liked Chris S and that was because he was getting his eyebrows waxed and I was like cool grooming is good take care of that stuff yeah okay fair enough it wouldn't be like my he was the also one that like dove into the ocean with floaties I thought that was kind of funny <laughs> you just oh. don't like the ocean Callie <laughs> that's true that might so, have been it. It was it's a losing battle for you. I think it's a combination between that and also like my first thought was like, wow, your arms must be really skinny because where the <laughs> fuck did you find floaties where your arms would fit in? I didn't think about that, but good point. That's a real that's a real commentary we need from a mother like you. <laughs> <laughs> um one thing I wanted to touch on, because I feel like um Michelle touched on it and you know, it's just a part of the show is race. And I felt like one of the things I liked about Nate and Michelle was they're both like, yeah, we're both biracial. And they were like, that's like a point yeah. for them to bond over without it being like forced onto the show. Like it was in that season. I was curious what you thought. I feel like it seemed much more organic than in yeah. the past, which means that maybe the Bachelor of Fright franchise is just like slowly moving into normalcy because <laughs> it's been so weird in the past couple of like seasons where they've had black leads. Like I feel like Rachel was forced to talk about it. Tasha was forced to talk about it. Matt was forced to talk about it. Like it's just been like, so <sighs> it's been such a correction for yeah. the 
the 40 years before, I don't know how many years, but however many years before 20, 20 years, like four, 38 seasons, I believe. Yeah. So it seemed like this episode, it seemed like they just like happened to bring it up. Cause it is like a part of their lives. It wasn't yeah. like someone forcing them to have like, and the conversation wasn't long. Like it was just like a, this is what it is. And I'm like, that's how a normal conversation would be. Yeah. Yeah. And also when she was like, I'm a woman of color. My students are right near or, you know, in oh, Minneapolis. Yeah. Like if anyone was going to understand, it would have been me. Like I, it just sort of was like part of the conversation because it's part of her life and their lives. But I was, I, I guess this is like such a low bar, but I was just like relieved. I was like, thank God they found a normal way to have these conversations without like doing like the kind of 1990s sitcom, very special episode. Yeah. Also, even that could have been like, uh, a, a, a cringe worthy conversation that could have made it into something that it shouldn't have been. Yeah. Um, and I thought it was fine. So maybe things it's are an, moving in the right direction. Maybe. And kudos to Michelle, you know, because she's the one who like didn't seem to shy away from any of these conversations. And she also like really flawlessly went back and forth between like serious and like playful, which makes, which was like a joy to watch too. I mean, she's great. Yeah. Also who knows? Like, if she shut anything down, like if they tried to make it more out of something and she was like, no, this is what we're doing. Let's move on. Like yeah. who knows? Yeah. So. And like getting rid of Ryan, like allowed it to not be a season, a, a season long plot line, which even if I, I kind of didn't hate him, I appreciate it. Cause it would have been boring. Yeah. I didn't, he needed to go. Who do you think are some other contenders aside from just like who we personally like? I mean, I think Nate, <sighs> the Bachelorette has a history of the first impression Rose winner going far. Many of Bachelorettes have chosen their dudes on night one. So gotta, gotta assume he's going far. I think Joe will go far. The Me guy she, she knows. I feel like people will like, you sometimes in this type of environment, I feel like you gravitate towards something, you know, even, even more because everything else is like so chaotic. I feel like Rodney goes far. Apple guy. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Okay. He wasn't one of my favorites, but I think, I think he's going to go far. She didn't seem like she had like a ton of vibes with a lot of people. The only like vibes I was like, Ooh, was Nate and Rick. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot. Rick probably goes far too. Rick on a plate. Yeah. When I was in high school, I once went to <laughs> California pizza kitchen with my three friends. Ooh. and we, oh, They used to have great hummus. They took it off the menu. It's fucking nuts. Anyway, I hate when that happens. Me too. It's bullshit. Anyway, we went to CPK, the one on 60th and 3rd, and it was like in 10th grade. <laughs> and my friend, my friend Talia, just for some reason, we took all these pictures of her like bending down in the booth with like her head like on a plate. And we just kept referring to these photos <laughs> for the next 20 years as Talia on a plate. And so at, when Rick was doing this, all I could think of was my friend at CPK who did like a photo shoot 20 years ago. And so for, he'll be forever known as Rick on a plate to me. I like truly don't understand. <laughs> I'm going to have to dig up this Talia on a plate photo. If Talia allows and I'll post it on Instagram. Well, yeah, I've, I can, I can confidently say I've never done that before. You've never held a plate up to your chin, like taking a photo. <laughs> never. I don't know why we did it. I've never taken a photo of someone doing that. I don't know why we did it. Callie weird things happened at CPK when I was in high school. Okay. Um. Also like, Everyone was like, oh, that was creative. And I was just like, well, it's just kind of weird. <laughs> it was super weird. I don't even know how like they started doing that. I, I don't I don't know. Like, well, who thought of that and why? It, it was yeah, really do funny. Do the guys come up with it or is it producers? What I've heard is that people who they think might not have a great like presence at the beginning, they encourage them to have a prop or whatever. And then I think like depending on like who's down for it, they collab on on uh these gimmicks or whatever so it's a it's a mm. a joint effort between the guys and the producers i mean clearly they they can't like arrange this themselves although i bet some of them do pitch it be like hey, i have a great idea for an entrance can you help me or whatever like i could definitely see ryan being like let's do this ice cream thing yeah i mean that wasn't his entrance though right that was like his like date yeah didn't he come in on the truck oh no it was, it was there at the outside someone came in on the school bus that's what wait it was. which yeah, which also I found it odd when Tasha was like, What is that? And Caitlin was like, It's an ice cream truck. <laughs> like, obviously. And I then I say, remembered that Tasha's from Newport. Like, yeah. So I'm like, probably wasn't 
a lot of ice cream trucks where she's from. But her, like, what in the world is that? And Caitlin was like very dry, like, it's a fucking ice cream truck. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Tasha clearly, based on her bagel situation, when she was putting literal blueberries onto on, to- on top of a bagel and saying she loved blueberry bagels. She clearly is not familiar with many of my Julia Littman's favorite foods being bagels <laughs> and soft serve from an ice cream truck. So I just, I can't, it's just, we're from different worlds. Literally. I, Mr. Softy yeah. is like a hallmark of my life. I love it so dearly. And she just has no idea. Whatever. Soft serve is so good. Oh my God. I love it. Mr. Softy By the is way, shit. It is, but Chick-fil-A soft serve is like, Next level. Uh, Next I think level. McDonald's soft serve is really good too. I love, also, I love a McFlurry. Love. Wait, have you had Chick fil A's? No. By the way, I feel like people really enjoy our food talk. So I know we're going <laughs> on a tangent, but I love McDonald's soft serve. I had a Sunday the other day. I've been on a McFlurry spree. I love I switched McFlurry's. It up, Ugh, switched delicious. it up with just their chocolate Sunday from McDonald's. It was awesome. Their chocolate sauce is like really fucking good at McDonald's. But Chick fil A soft serve is like, I gotta I mean, try it. It's the best. It's the best I've ever had. Chick fil A is not a huge part of my life because I'm a northerner and it's like only recently came to New York. And, and oh, I, I thought it was gonna be for political reasons. Well, there's that as well. I do like when <laughs> I, I don't want to say I like it, but it, it's also funny to me when I see like a sign on this highway that's like closed on all the, you know, like all the, the rest stop oh, closed signs. Closed on Sundays. Closed on Sundays. Yeah. And also for political reasons. But, um, I hate Chick Fil A for political reasons, and I love it because it's the only fast food restaurant I really go to. No Taco Bell for you? Oh, I do like Taco Bell, but I, I haven't been Taco there in a Bell. while. <laughs> happily, I feel like if you want to meet at a Taco Bell, I'll happily go. <laughs> fast food, generally, plus twenty eight years old, I don't really go. Minus Chick Fil A, I do still go to Chick Fil A a lot, but outside of that, I just never get fast food. In my twenties, especially post two a.m. Oh yeah. I got fast food a ton and Taco Bell was one of my Taco Bell and Popeyes were like my faves. I think fast food was a much bigger part of my life when I was living in LA. And I would just like Oh, maybe with, that's what it is. I'd like be at my wits end. I'd just be like, oh, there's a Del Taco on my corner. I'm just gonna hit it on the way home from work. It's nine or like after oh, Jack in the Box for uh, all that. Two tacos for 99 cents. <laughs> Hell yeah. So good. So good. Also so good. I mean, I've definitely asked the Uber to take me to Jack in the Box and Taco Bell. So it's just yeah, I think it's I think a big it's part also, of LA life. Yeah, it is. And like, you have to drive so far mm-hmm. in LA. So like, especially at like three o'clock in the morning, you're like, we either stop and get Taco Bell or I throw up in the back of your Uber. So you decide what you want. What, yeah. what do you want your What's destiny up? to be? It's on you, driver. <laughs> I, also, <laughs> I also used to go, when I lived in San Francisco, I had a friend with a car and he'd pick me up and we would go to like a faraway Jack in the Box in San Francisco to get shakes at like midnight or like 11. It was so good. Yeah. Um, Great sorry times. for the tangent. But. Great times. Just love a fast food shake and soft serve is, is the point here. <laughs> so good. Also, um, I would absolutely love an ice cream truck date first date. So that sounds, 100%. Sounds great. I that'd did great. like that. Yeah. I did like awesome. that. That would be so awesome. I will say that in general, there's so many dates on like the Bachelor franchise shows that I'm like, ugh, would yeah. not want that. A simple ice cream date probably ranks in the top 10. Absolutely. A nice walk and ice creams. Great. I just love it. It's a great first date. No pressure. It's good. Good, good talking. Get a drink. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, sounds perfect to me. Yeah. I uh Michelle was the star of this episode. The guys are cool. Hopefully, hopefully someone will materialize that I can really like get passionate about, but I don't know. Like, I feel like I'm like I I I'm not fully on the Nate wagon, but after night one, I was like really fucking like Nate. I like Nate and I like Leroy Holiday. Mostly because I, he looks just looks like Leroy Holidays. Holiday was for sure. I, I, yeah, I think I liked him more because of how much he looked like. <laughs> Me like too. every time he was on the screen, I was like, there he is. Um, but yeah. I, I think I bought a ticket on the Nate bus. Okay. But, but I did it by a one way, you know, okay. about a round sure. trip. So I'm not fully bought in, but okay. we'll see what happens. I'm not ready to commit to one guy yet. I'll I'll let you know next week. But I'm I'm excited. I just like the Bachelorette more than the Bachelor anyway, so that's cool. I don't, I don't but I am happy about this. Michelle, we love you. I just feel like everyone's in love, Michelle. She's how, what's wrong with her? I mean, she's like, I, like it's even more shocking that Matt didn't choose her. She seems fun. She's cool. She's teacher. She's like substantive. I don't know. I'm, I I'm honestly in. completely forgot about Matt. 
I basically forgotten about Matt as well. However, he is like, on ABC every no, Monday. No, no, no. I mean, like, <laughs> forgot about them. Like, I don't think of her and think of him. You know, yeah, with a know. lot of the old contestants, like, you think about when, when they yeah. lost, what their past season. Like, I didn't think about her with Matt almost at all. I don't she think at all. She got so little screen time. Like so yeah. little. And Maybe that what she got why. was great, but like we didn't really get to know her. So it's also one of the reasons why she was the real star of this episode is because we're like finally getting the real Michelle. I hope they show yeah. her being fun and they don't like force her to play basketball every day because I'm sure there's <laughs> more to her than that. <laughs> but if she wants to, that's um, cool too. <laughs> yeah. We don't need to see her play basketball actually again. We've gotten enough content. Oh, seriously. I wonder if she's a T-Wolves fan. Like what's her team? Yeesh. I don't know. I could see her like rallying around. Carl Anthony Towns. I don't even know who else is on the team right now. I'm going to look up their roster. D'Angelo Russell. Oh, right. D'Lo. Cool. D'Loading. I forget. I never really understood yeah, that. Yeah. D'Loading. Mal- right. Malik Beasley. Right. Oh, um, Anthony Edwards. Patrick Anthony. Beverly. Oh, my gosh. Anthony Edwards, by the way, star. He is hilarious. You would love him if you look at his, watch his interviews. Okay. I will. Um, Great. Also, wait, what's um, the guy from Duke? He has a brother. Guy from Duke who has Ty a brother. Jones. Tyus oh, Jones. Tyus Jones. Yeah. I don't, I don't think he's go. on the team anymore. Um, I think maybe his brother's on the team. Oh. No? Okay. Cool. Maybe he got traded. I don't know. Well, shout out to everyone who's made it to the hour mark of our podcast for us to just <laughs> name people who may or may not be on the Timberwolves, <laughs> the Timberwolves roster. <laughs> hey, it's opening tip off this week. So we're excited. Uh, it's Gosh, all happening crazy. this week. We got the NBA and more importantly, we got Michelle. Callie, thank you so much for joining me. Kaya, thank you so much for producing. That would be Kaya McMullen. Find her on social if you'd like. I don't know if you want that, Kaya, but now it might happen. (laughs) And I'll be back on Thursday. We'll be back next week. Uh, Happy Michelle season, everybody. Yay. Yay.